I'm Brad Brown. I've been performing magic ever since I was a child, and now I partner with churches and other Christian organizations to present the gospel through illusion. I started out with the magic kits and magic books, and I actually found a box of magic apparatus in my grandmother's attic, and I just kept going ever since then. I actually came to know the Lord when I was in the seventh grade, and after I became a Christian, it just naturally flowed into everything I did, including my magic performances. I think magic is an excellent tool to present the gospel because it attracts people, it grabs their attention, and it allows me to very clearly present the gospel in a way that is easily understood. You know, the primary reason I'm doing this is to be able to present the gospel to people. I always try to say the central truth of Christianity, and it really makes me feel good when people receive the gospel in a positive way, whether they actually accept Jesus or just you know, hearing it to be able to think about it, because that's ultimately why I'm doing what I do. In any ministry, it's the character of a man that, that is primary. And Brad is, is a man of prayer. He's a man of God. He, he loves the Lord with all of his heart. He shows that in a lot of different ways within the fiber of a church and even in his relationships within the community. And it's clear that the purpose behind Brad's ministry is the gospel, that it's an outreach event. Um, you know, it's, it's really to touch and go to the heart of the matter uh, and why Christ can really radically change the life of an individual. His personality is such that it's non-challenging, it's easy, and he got that message in there. And uh, it comes through. When Brad comes to your organization, when he comes to your church, uh, you're going to get a sense of, of warmth, a sense of joy, and you're going to laugh a whole lot. This method of bringing the gospel to people, kind of meeting people where they're at, is very important. He's a great man. He's a great communicator. And he loves what he does, and that shows when he performs his magic. I believe in the local church. It's my job not just to come in as a, a lone ranger of ministry and, and, and do programs, but I believe in partnering and working alongside the local church and with local Christian organizations because they're the ones who are truly doing the work long term. So it's my job to come alongside them and help them meet their goals and make their event and their ministry successful. So in some cases, it's an evangelistic outreach event where the goal is to present the gospel to people who haven't heard it before. Sometimes it's just to provide wholesome family entertainment. You know, other times it's, it's to keep the children entertained while something else is going on or as a thank you event for Christian workers. So whatever the needs are they're trying to meet, it's my job to try to meet them. I can tailor my program to fit pretty much any age. I do everything from preschoolers to senior citizens' audiences to, to everything in between. And everyone can enjoy the program and everyone can understand the message that is being presented. Now, stage magic is the art of using natural causes whose operation is secret to produce surprising results. You know, everything I do is completely natural, but I can use it as a tool to teach about the supernatural, both the, the fake supernatural, things like psychics and ESP and you know, I can show how some of that is not what it appears to be, but I also can use it as a springboard to talk about the genuine supernatural, which is a relationship with God himself. Go! There are a couple of rules I probably should mention. The first rule is I have to be able to breathe. It's very important to me to have the audience actively involved in making the magic happen. And sometimes that can happen with, you know, the entire audience helping with something. And it also happens when I bring people from the audience up to help actually be involved and hands-on in making the magic happen. And then once I've established a relationship with the audience, I can present the gospel in a meaningful way. Almighty, all-powerful God who made heaven and earth, that God, he became a human being. He became the man Jesus Christ. The clearest and presentation of the gospel God. that I do in my programs is something called the, the three ball illustration, where I use three balls to clearly illustrate the principles of the gospel, that you know, God desires a relationship with us, that because of our own sin, we've been separated from God, and that Jesus, who knew no sin, died in our place to take away our sins so that we could have that relationship with God restored. When Jesus died, he took away the sin that separated us from God. 
In fact, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. There's a lot of interest in the supposed supernatural. For example, one thing many people have done to prove they have some sort of supernatural power is to move a table magically, saying that it's the spirits that are moving the table. So I have in my act a floating table, which floats around the room, seems to have no human way possible it could be done, but it's, it's just a trick. And by showing people this, you know, I can show them how these other people who claim to have some sort of special power are really nothing but, but tricksters claiming to be something they're not. I do several effects where I appear to have some mental ability to be able to read someone's mind. Would it be amazing if I could turn this around and show you the card that Tammy is thinking of? And I can use that as a springboard to talk about psychics and ESP. There's a lot of interest in what's called the paranormal. And many people believe in psychics and people who can talk to dead people. But as Christians, those of us who know God, we don't have to turn to people like that. In fact, it's important that we, we don't turn to people like that because we have a close relationship with the creator of the universe himself. So we can always go straight to him when we have a decision to make, when we don't know what to do in life. We can hand our lives over to him. He's always going to be there to lead us and to guide us. For three years, I have performed in Southeast Asia with Campus Crusade for Christ, presenting the gospel in schools, colleges, churches, you know, public programs. It's important to keep the message very simple because there are language barriers. Even if they speak English, it can be hard to understand my accent and their cultural differences. So I try to present very simply, very clearly, the truth of the gospel. And magic is an excellent tool overseas because it does attract such attention and grab such a crowd. In India, sometimes we are performing for crowds of thousands and thousands of people because there's a great interest in magic. And while they're there, we're able to present the gospel. And we're also able to do it in a way that's very non-threatening. People are coming from Muslim backgrounds, from Hindu backgrounds, and you know, we're not there to offend people or to turn people away. We present it as basically, here's what I've discovered the truth to be, and present it for their consideration. My favorite part of the magic show was when he did all the things with the different ribbons and the kids. You know, that was pretty cool. He cracked me up how he could react to it whenever he made a speech. <laughs> I like the bowling ball. He like. They had to like try to keep the joke in their mouth, and then like all kinds of colors came out, and it was just the same thing. The vegematic or the uh, food processor scene that he had, um, I was crying. It was so funny. My children's eyes had lit up. It was it was hysterical to me. Instant coleslaw. I felt like my head was going to be chopped off, but again, it was a little scary at first. I think it was really cute that he was brave enough to go out, trust Brad enough to go up and uh, participate in the show. Hey, don't move. It was really cool how my brother got his head to stay on. <laughs> it's a neat way to minister to other people because, you know, not everybody's all interested in a sermon, but if they... If you show them something neat, they'll really want to watch them. It's something that you can bring your family to and know that you won't have any worries about what they might hear. It's something that is new, it's entertaining. I attend another church and I uh, was even considering asking Brad what his services are for the future for our own church. There's definitely a great ministry through magic and the Christian concepts and ideas that he's presented. It's really, really inspiring and, and I think it's um, something that would be really worthwhile for all families to, to see and some to understand and know more about Jesus. I think there's definitely a need in churches today to be able to present the gospel in a way that is relevant to people, that it's non-threatening, can be easily understood. And obviously we can't change the gospel or soften up the gospel message because that never changes. But we need to change how we present the gospel to remain relevant to the culture. I think any church or group that would bring Brad to their function would be just delighted and would really have a great time. He appeals to every age group that I've ever seen him with, and that goes from one end of the spectrum to the other. So I really can't think of anybody that, that couldn't invite him and feel confident that uh, he would put on a, a wonderful show and present the gospel. I'm looking forward to hearing from you about how we can partner together to reach the lost or to build up Christians in your community and to help make your ministry more successful.